Hi everybody. Before we get into the meat of the video, I just want to warn you that my microphone was having issues on this video, so there are some sound irregularities. Hopefully they won't affect it too much, but I did want to let you know that before we get too far. Hey my friends, all of y'all on Instagram asked, so ask and you shall receive. <laughs> We're going to do a video about some abstract art making that um, can be used as therapeutic art. So if you follow my channel, we haven't done a lot of abstract stuff yet, but we're going to do that today. Why are we doing this? We're doing this because this is, this is one of my favorite things about making art. It's less about the outcome and the product, and it's more about how this process makes you feel. That's why I consider it therapeutic art. And while we're doing it, we're going to talk about the difference between therapeutic art and art therapy. They are two very different things. This is therapeutic art because the whole point of it is to get ourselves into kind of this art flow state where we're not really worrying about everything going on around us. We're not worried about the stresses of the day. We're not worried about any of that. We're concentrating on making the art. So we're going to make something like this. I shared this on my Instagram a couple of days ago and um, everybody wanted a video to learn how to do it. So that's what we're gonna do today. Um, and I'm going to hopefully show you some tips to make this a little easier. Um, I, I don't know about y'all, but I know when I look at some of this abstract art, I kind of get caught up in this mental loop of how they do that. I can't do that. I can't figure out what they did. Ah! And I want to take some of that out of this, okay? So we're going to make something that looks like this, but we're going to break it down step by step and make it a little easier. So what do we need to do this? You need a piece of watercolor paper. We're going to use watercolors. You could do this same thing with acrylics. Um, you might even be able to do something similar with markers. The process is going to be a little bit different, but I think you could probably still get a similar outcome. But we're going to use watercolors because that's what is the most fun for me. So I've got a nine by 12 piece of watercolor paper. I have already taped it down to my canvas board so that it's gonna stay put. We're gonna do some more taping with this though. So you're gonna need some additional tape and what kind of tape is completely up to you. I used a wide painter's tape around the border but I don't wanna use the wide tape on here because I'm gonna use the tape to make my squares and I want it to be a reasonable size. If I use this wide painter's tape, it would take up the bulk of my paper and my squares would be real tiny and that's not what I want. Now, if that's how you want yours to be, you could certainly do that and I have seen people do that. I'm gonna use a tape that is a little closer to maybe an inch wide. Um, this is Scotch Wall Safe tape. I like it because it comes off the paper nicely, but you could use masking tape, um, washi tape, anything like that. Just make sure that if you're using a tape that's really, really sticky, when you pull it off the roll, stick it like on the leg of your pants first or something like that so you get a little fuzz on it to make it a little um, less sticky so that it won't rip your paper. Um, I've got my watercolors, watercolors of your choice. We're gonna talk about choosing colors in a minute. I've got some water. I've got a plate over here off to the side that I can use to mix or dilute. And I've got a whole bunch of tools that I'm gonna use to paint. You do not need all of these. Um, I'm gonna show you some different things, but you don't need to use all of these. I am probably only gonna use one or two of these, but I wanna give myself choices. So I've got a, a watercolor brush. I've got a fan brush, because this can make some interesting marks. I've got a palette knife, again, can make interesting marks. A couple of sponges, a toothbrush. You could use something like sticks or leaves or even a bunch of grass tied together so that you have all the little grassy fronds. Anything you want can be used to make some of these darker marks. You could do it with a pen. All kinds of different ways you can do that, okay? So I've just got kind of a, I've got a couple pens as well. I've just got kind of an assortment of tools and we're gonna play around with them a little bit um, so I can show you some of the options you can do there. But first, we need to tape off our piece of paper so that we end up with squares like this. Now the reason I'm doing this is because trying to formulate in your mind an abstract type pattern on a big blank piece of paper can be a bit overwhelming. 
At least it can for me. And I, I think a lot of people probably fall into that category. So we're going to break it down into smaller squares. And we're not going to worry so much about trying to have an overall cohesive design. So the way I'm going to do that is to take my tape. And I'm just going to start marking off squares. Now, if you want to be very precise about this, you could certainly measure it. I'm just going to eyeball it. And what I'm going to do is eyeball the middle and put a piece of tape. And then I'm going to eyeball halfway between there and the top and put a piece of tape. And make sure you get this pressed down really good so that you don't have paint seeping under the edges. And I'm going to do one more down here at the bottom, eyeballing between the middle piece of tape and the bottom. If you're eyeballing it and they're not exact, that is completely okay. The whole point of this type of project is that we're not stressing about this. We are doing this solely for the purpose of what the process feels like. Okay, so I just turned my paper sideways just because it's it feels easier for me than trying to go the other way. And I'm going to take a couple more pieces of tape. And I'm going to go in thirds this way. Now, could I do it in half and half again? Yes, but I'm going to end up with little tiny squares. And I don't want the little tiny squares. If you do, absolutely you can do that. You get to decide how this is split up. Now, I'm doing squares. Could you go diagonally and make like diamond shapes? Absolutely. Could you go some diagonally and some straight and some wonky? So you have all kinds of random shapes? Absolutely. That's absolutely an option. Oops. So I'm just going to eyeball dividing this in thirds, okay? So when you're doing yours, if you want to do squares, great. If you want to put your tape in random ways so that you get random shapes or triangles or diamonds, absolutely do that. It does not have to be squares. This, this is where your creativity comes into play in deciding what shapes you want. All the tape is designed to do, and hopefully you can see the tape shine there, is just designed to break the paper up into little pieces so that we're not worried so much about trying to have one cohesive design over everything. Okay, so with my paper divided up, let me show you this one again. Often, particularly if you're watching um, time-lapse videos and things like that online, when people are doing this type of abstract art, they're going to start with the black. And they're going to make their black lines first. I'm not going to do that today. And the reason I'm not going to do that is because I don't have a waterproof black tool that's big enough to make these thick lines. So what do I mean by that? Could I do it with my pen? Yes. But my pen tip is not that big. To do these thick lines, I would have to be coloring over it and coloring over it and coloring over it. And I don't want to do that because I want these to feel more kind of organic. And if I'm trying to do those big thick lines with a thin tip pen, it's gonna end up way more structured than I want it to be. So I'm gonna use black watercolor. And because I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do the black later on in the process. So I'm not gonna start this like you will see a lot of people start this. I'm gonna do the colored backgrounds first. Then I'm going to come back and do the black over the top because I'm using watercolor. If I did my black lines with watercolor, when I come over with these other colors, it's going to smear. And I don't want that. I want to keep my colors um, as vibrant as I can. So we're going to do the black lines a little further on in the process. So I'm going to start with my colors first. Now, how do you decide what colors to use? Um, it's up to you. People hate that answer when I give that answer. Um, it's up to you. But I will give you a couple things to think about when you're choosing colors. One is, if this feels overwhelming, choose maybe two colors that are going to play nicely together. Um, and if you're not sure if they're going to play nicely together, try them on a separate piece of paper. Just, you know, do a swatch of each of them and bump them up against each other and see what happens when those colors merge together. If they turn muddy and brown and you don't want that, then you know those two colors aren't going to play nicely together. Maybe you like a, a muddy brown color that they would create. If you do, absolutely, you can use those. It's completely personal preference. 
Another thing to think about when you're choosing colors though is what is your intention with this? Now, if we're using this as a therapeutic form of art, you might want to choose colors that can help with that process. So um, real quickly, what do I mean by that? Therapeutic art versus art therapy. Art therapy is a, um, a very, maybe structured isn't quite the right word, but um, it's a form of therapy that you have to have training for, you have to get certified for, um, a lot like a talk therapist. You have art therapists. The purpose of that is to help you work through mental health issues, emotional issues, using art as a tool. And they have very structured ways that they do that. That's not what we're doing. Now, that's not to say things can't come up while we're doing this. But we're doing this on our own more as a form of stress release, anxiety relief. Um, it can help you think through problems, things like that. Um, is there emotion, an emotional, mental well-being aspect to this? Absolutely. But we're not doing it in a structured environment with a therapist helping us through the process. So when you hear art therapy, know that that's a, a certified modality of um, the therapy industry. Therapeutic art is something that you're doing on your own for enjoyment, for stress relief, something like that. And that's what we're doing today. That said, when you do this, there are things you can do like choosing colors that can help you with the process. So for instance, when I did this one, I was feeling kind of sad this day, working through some grief things, um, some things that had come up for me. And so I was using colors that to me said sad. And using those colors to, to kind of just contemplate why I was feeling sad and, and what was going on in my heart, in my mind, and turning that into something pretty. Okay. Today, I'm going to use some different colors because I don't want to do the exact same thing I did as we're illustrating for you guys. But the other thing that I'm noticing come up a lot for me lately is anger over a lot of different things. And I'm not going to go into the, <laughs> the details of that, but anger is often represented by oranges, pinks, yellows, those, those kind of fiery colors. That's what I'm going to use today. And the same kind of thought process. My intention is going to be to take some of that anger and use those angry colors and turn them into something pretty. Now, in the process of doing this, for me, it's going to let me kind of release those emotions here instead of holding them in my body. And that's the point for me in doing something like this often. Um, you could also use kind of the reverse thought process on that. If, if you're dealing with maybe some sadness and some grief and you want to bring a little more joy and happiness and maybe you use happier colors instead of using, you know, the darker blues and purples, maybe you use pinks and yellows and oranges and things that are, you know, greens that are kind of vibrant, happy colors. So you can also use the colors to kind of counteract, um, what you're, what you're working on. So if I wanted to, rather than using the reds and yellows and, you know, those fiery colors, I could use maybe blues and greens to kind of tone down that anger a little bit. So there's, there's two different ways you can look at this. Um, you get to decide what you think is going to work best for you. Today, I am going to use those brighter colors just because I feel like that's what I want to do. Okay. So I'm going to start with my brush just because that's what I want to start with. I could start with any of these other tools, but I'm going to start with my brush. And I'm going to use it to just kind of make some random shapes all over my paper with oranges, reds, pinks. Okay, so I already um, pre-wet the two colors I'm going to use. I'm going to use this kind of pinky red, and I'm going to use that yellow. And I'm going to paint straight out of my pan. If you wanted to mix colors, you could certainly put them on a plate. Um, and I'm going to mix up a good bit of black in just a little bit, so I'll show you that. Um, but for right now... I'm just going to paint straight out of my pans, and I'm not going to really overthink the design. However you want to do this is up to you, and what I would suggest is that instead of trying to plan, I'm going to paint here, and I'm going to paint here, and I'm going to paint here, just let your brush kind of wander to start with, and 
to help with that overthinking issue, narrate what you're doing to yourself. Whether you do it in your head or out loud is fine. But do something like red paint, letting my brush wander. If it starts to feel like it's drying, you can just grab some more water and continue on. Red paint, letting my brush wander. Wander, wander, wander. And that act of narrating is going to keep your mind focused here instead of on the dishes you haven't done and the groceries that might need to be picked up and the kids that need to be shuttled wherever they need to go. You'll notice that I'm going right over the tape. I'm not worrying about trying to paint in each individual square. They're going to take on a life of their own as you go. I'm just kind of wandering over the whole piece of paper. So you can literally just play with this. And I'm not worrying about drips. If it drips here and there, perfect. That's just going to add to it, right? So I'm just going to continue adding color on here until it feels like I've maybe got enough. I'm not doing it real fast. But I'm not going real slow and thinking about every single move either. So I end up with something like that. And for me right now, that feels like enough red. So you're just going to continue to do this until you feel like you've got enough. We do want to keep in mind to leave some white space on this so that we're not filling up absolutely everything because that white space can be valuable and it gives us some contrast. So before I do anything else, I'm going to let this dry. Now, could you go straight in with your other color and let them merge and mingle together? You could, but in my mind's eye, I'm not seeing that. I'm seeing them separate um, to a certain extent. So I'm going to let this dry. You can either set it aside for a few minutes or you can make it dry with a blow dryer, which is what I'm going to do. So I'll be right back in just a minute after I blow dry this. Okay, so mine's all dry. Um, I do want to show you something here real quick, though. When I hit this with the blow dryer, there were some spots where the paint was, um, there was a lot of water, a lot of paint. And when you have a lot of water, a lot of paint, if you're trying to blow it dry, the blow dryer wants to push that water and paint. I let it do that. So you can see here, there's kind of a, a runoff. And here where that drip was, there's kind of a runoff. And a runoff here, and a runoff here, and a runoff here. I let the blow dryer push that paint and let it blow it around because that's part of abstract. I figured it would look fine because I'm not going for a very specific pattern anyway. So I just let it push it and let it do what it wanted to do. Um, while I was doing that, I also grabbed a big fat brush because I didn't have one of those out here. And I want to use this, I think, for my yellow. So... What I notice happening as I'm doing this kind of process is that when I do one thing, I start to get ideas for what the next thing is going to be because I'm not worrying about all the things that are going on in my life. I'm concentrating here. So while I was doing this, in my mind's eye, I was seeing these big, wide swaths of yellow. So I grabbed a bigger brush, and that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to use this big brush to grab some of my yellow and water it down pretty good on my plate and just make a great big puddle of yellow because I'm feeling like I'm going to use a lot of it. <laughs> and I may, need to, I may need to come back and make some more. Um, so I'm just loading up my fat brush with that yellow and I'm just going to do these big, long, strokes of yellow and you can see it started to skip here and there and it's just because my brush was too dry you can dip your brush in water and get some more water or you can leave the skips if you like the way that skip look looks on there you don't have to fill it in and you can see as i'm doing this it is picking up some of that red because it wasn't a hundred percent dry and that's okay letting these colors play together is part of the process for me. So I'm just going to keep grabbing some more of this yellow 
and randomly putting on big swaths of yellow. So I've got some spots that are more yellow than others where it didn't mix with the red very much. And I've got other spots that are more orange where it did mix with the red. And that's completely okay. So again, in my head, I'm kind of narrating to myself what I'm doing here. Painting splotches of yellow. Painting splotches of yellow. Painting splotches of yellow. That keeps my mind focused here. And just like we did with the red, you're going to just keep doing this until you feel like you've got enough. There we go. And it looks like a hot mess at this point, right? This is one of those projects that often you look at it while you're doing it, and the whole time you're doing it, you're looking at it going, I, yeah, 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 I hate this. Because it doesn't really resemble anything. But what I have found is that in a process like this, there's there's kind of two bits of magic. The first bit is that it is calming your mind. It's calming anxiety. It's relieving stress. It's, it's letting these emotions out on the paper. And the other bit of magic is, as one unit like this, it looks maybe terrible. But once you break it down into these little vignettes, each one of these takes on a life of its own and becomes something uniquely beautiful in its own way. Okay, so we're not going to judge this as we're doing it. And ultimately, at the end of the day, when you do get it done, if you still hate it, that's okay. You don't have to like every piece of art that you do. If you find that when you finish this project, you don't like the look, but you feel calmer, you feel like you're breathing deeper, you feel like your mind is a little bit clearer, you feel like uh, maybe you're thinking more coherently, that's the point. <laughs> That is absolutely the point of this process. So I got my yellow on there. I am going to let that yellow dry. Actually, I'm going to go make it dry. I'm going to go blow dry it again before I put another color on top because I think I'm going to do my black next. And I don't want the black um, to mingle very much with the yellow and red. I want it to be very distinctly itself. So I'm going to go blow dry, the, bleh, go blow dry this real quick. If you need to let yours dry, you can do the same thing. Either set it aside for a few minutes or hit it with a blow dryer or a heat gun, something like that. Um, just make sure if you're using a heat gun, you're using a low setting. Because if you use too high of a heat setting, it can affect your colors. They can change a little bit. So let's go dry this. Okay, so I'm back and we're dry. Um, real quick, I wanna mention that where we're painting over the tape, um, depending on the tape you're using, the paint might not dry really well on the tape, so you might notice there are still some damp spots on the tape. You can um, just take a paper towel or something like that and wipe it over those tape lines to get that any excess paint that hasn't dried off of there if you want to. It just keeps it from smearing into the rest of your painting, um, keeps it a little bit cleaner if you need to do that if you're finding that paint's not drying real well over your tape. So I'm going to go in with my black now. So I think I'm going to make first just a big puddle of black paint on my plate because um, I'm going to use a number of these different tools that I've got to make some different designs, excuse me, with the black paint. So I'm just going to put a great big puddle of black paint on my plate. Um, do you have to use black? No. You could use really any any dark contrasting color you wanted to. You could use maybe something like an indigo blue, which is a real dark blue, or a dark brown, or dark green. Um, you know, any any color that is kind of high contrast to the ones you've already used will work just fine. I happen to like the look of black contrasting colors, so that's why I'm going to use the black. Um, so let me rinse my brush off here a little bit and we will get to making some designs. So I think the first thing I'm going to use is uh, my sponge. Um, this is just a sea sponge and I'm going to use it to kind of pounce 
color onto the paper here and there. And um, before I do that, I'm going to want to get it wet. So I've just got a jar of regular water. I'm going to stick that sponge down there and get it wet. Um, it will hold the paint better and also use a little bit less paint if it's wet to start with. If you just pounce that dry sponge into the black paint, it's going to soak up all of that paint and we don't need it to use all of it. So with that wet, oops, hang on just a second. I think my sound is getting funky here for a minute. Um, so with my sponge wet, I'm just going to dip it in the black paint on my plate. And then here and there, I'm just going to splotch it a little bit on my painting. Again, this whole thing is probably going to look like a big hot mess until we get it done. And that's okay. I'm not going to really worry about it. You don't have to do the whole thing. You can just do it here and there. Do as much as you like. Now, the sponge that you start with is going to determine the texture. This one um, is kind of on the finer side, I guess. Whatever sponge you start with is going to determine that texture. Now, the other thing I'm going to use is a fan brush. And I'm going to get it wet first. And I like these because often, see how that's splayed apart? When you get these wet, those brush fibers will splay apart like that. And that's going to let me make some really funky marks. So I just ran that through the black paint on my plate. And I'm going to use it it to just make lines across my page because those brush fibers are all splayed out you get some really interesting lines and I'm just going to do that randomly here and there throughout my painting um, you don't have to do straight lines you can do curvy lines um, again there's really no right or wrong to this you're just making marks where you feel like there should be marks um, you get to decide how many, you get to decide how dark. Um, I just keep running my brush back through this black paint and swiping them here and there, wherever you want to put them. You can also do curved lines. The fan brush, because of how the bristles are on the fan brush, it's fun to, to try making swoops with it in addition to straight lines because you get some really interesting marks. So don't be afraid to play with your tools a little bit um, and maybe use them in ways they aren't typically meant to be used. Um, smush them around, spin them around, press them down harder, use them lighter, however you choose. Um, I'm gonna try the palette knife now. And I think what I'm gonna do is just scrape my palette knife into the black paint. Um, the paint in this pan should be a little bit soft because I had some water in it when I made the puddle. So I should be able to just scrape a little bit of that black paint off onto the tip of my palette knife. And then you can use that to scrape onto your page and make a different type of mark yet. So this piece of the abstract work is really just about making marks on the paper. They don't have to be anything um, structured. We're just going for different types of marks. Something like this where you scrape it with a palette knife and then if you come back across it sideways, it kind of um, makes the paint spread off to the side a little bit and it gives it almost a little bit of texture. So by scraping that palette knife, um, I get different kinds of marks yet. And you can see some of the marks from the fan brush were kind of thin and narrow. Some of them were a little thicker. Some of these marks with the palette knife are a little bit thicker. So I'm getting a variety of different types of lines and marks, which ultimately is what's going to add interest to my painting. Um, you know, we're kind of still in the, it looks like a hot mess stage, but as we get more of this on here, you're going to see it start to take shape. I'm going to use uh, the toothbrush now to make some splatters. So I just ran the toothbrush through the black paint and then I'm tapping it against my finger to make splatters. Now you could turn it towards the paper and just wipe your thumb or your finger across it to make splatters. I don't like to do it that way because then I end up with paint all over my hand and usually all over absolutely everything else around me. So by just running the bristles through the paint and then tapping it on my finger, I get some interesting splatter marks. Again, you're going to do however many of those you choose. You get to decide. 
um, how many you want, where you want them. Um, it adds a little bit of a, a textured feel to the page because they are, the splatters are different looking than the line marks that we made before. Okay, so as you start getting more design elements on here, um, and I'm, I'm using design elements loosely because we're not really planning a, de a design based on design principles. We're just kind of letting our imagination run here, but as you get more elements on here, you are gonna wanna start kind of taking a step back from it and just thinking about, not too hard, <laughs> but thinking about what else do you wanna have on it and, and just let those thoughts kind of come to you naturally. By this point in the game, hopefully, you're feeling relaxed because you've not hurried the process. You've concentrated on making those marks. You've concentrated on where your colors are gonna go. And by concentrate, I don't mean overthinking, I mean, narrating to yourself using yellow using red stripes with yellow you know whatever whatever it is that you're doing just narrating what you're doing to yourself so hopefully you're feeling kind of relaxed and your mind is not on all of your day-to-day -day responsibilities you're fully in this process um, sometimes it can be helpful to maybe set it across the room from you and take a look at it and just kind of let your mind think what do I feel like this needs on mine for me I feel like that pinky red that I used has kind of gotten lost a little bit. Now looking at it on camera, it doesn't seem that way, but that's what it feels like to me. So I wanna add some more red to this because in my mind, I'm seeing more red than anything. And I particularly like circles. So I think I'm gonna use this little circle, it's a circle sponge. I think I'm gonna use this to add some more red to this in spots by just putting a big red dot. So the way I'm gonna do that is to add a good bit of red to my plate, that way I've got something to dip that in. And I'm using a little bit of a different color than I did the first time. This is a little more on the red side and a little darker. So I'm gonna mix up quite a lot of it um, and I don't mean I don't mean a huge puddle by quite a lot. I mean I'm going to put a lot of pigment in it so that it's fairly saturated. So I have a nice dark color. And then I'm just going to take my little sponge. I'm going to get it a little bit wet to start with, like I did the other sponge. And I'm just going to dip it in there and splop it here and there, and make a red circle just here and there. Not really any rhyme or reason to it, just because I can. And just for the sake of saying I did, I'm gonna swirl it in my paint and see what happens. Yeah, that works. It happens to fit in my pan fairly easily, so um, don't be afraid to play with both your paints and your tools and see what happens. You never know, you might come up with something really cool that you hadn't thought of doing before. Or a different way to use a tool than you had thought of before. So there I've got some big red dots on there. And I think I'm gonna leave that alone for right now. I think that's telling me that's where it wants to be. So I'm gonna go dry this one more time and then I think the last thing I'm gonna do is maybe add some white on top of the red just to make that pop out a little bit. So I'm gonna go dry this, I'll be right back. Okay, back and dry. So from here, I'm gonna add some white dots on top of my red dots. For me, that's just going to make them pop out a little bit more. Um, I might, actually, I might even do some spirals in there instead. Oh yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> so again, we're not planning this, we're going with whatever comes up. I think spirals might be even better in there. So I'm gonna do some spirals. I'm gonna do those with a white paint pen. This just happens to be my white of choice um, because it's nice and opaque. Um, you could use um, one of the white gel pens. Um, you might even be able to use like a white colored pencil, something like that. Um, what you choose to use is up to you. This is just what I like to use. If you are using a paint pen like this that has the tips that you need to press in to ink them, 
Um, I would recommend that you make sure you do that on a separate piece of paper because you see how that splotched out all that white? Um, I'd have felt really bad if I'd have done that on my painting. So I always have an extra piece of paper to make sure that that tip is inked on before I put it on my painting because I don't want to have those big um, splotches of paint. So I think I'm just going to put a spiral in there. Ooh, yeah, I like that. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. My spirals are not perfect. I don't want them to be perfect. I'm not going for symmetrical and even. I'm just going for the act of drawing and painting. Um, my the tip of my pen is even catching a little bit here and there and it's kind of these paint pens if your tip catches it's going to splatter paint a little bit and it is and I'm okay with that so there's my spirals in my red oh yeah I like that um, might even add some dots to it now for me, this part of the process is where I really, really, really get into kind of that meditative um, kind of flow state is putting all these little details on because it's keeping my mind busy thinking about what do I want to put where. I'm not relying on design principles. I'm just going with whatever my imagination thinks it wants to add where it wants to add it. Um, you could even come back with like a black pen and put some more structured lines or shapes in here if you wanted to. So for instance, um, maybe where, like on this one, where I've got the lines going this way, maybe I want to come in and put some more structured lines going the other direction here just to give it a little bit of contrast. So I could come back with my pen and just draw in some more structured lines. You could do them straight like this. You could do them curvy. You could do other shapes. Maybe lines isn't what you want. Maybe you want to put some triangles or some circles. I'm a fan of circles. Circles end up in almost everything that I do. So maybe over here, I'm going to put some random sized circles. You get to decide how far you're gonna go with this, how much you're gonna do, what you're gonna put where. Um, I think I'm gonna turn this over so that I have a better drawing angle. Don't be afraid to rotate your paper, turn it around sideways, upside down, so that you get a better drawing angle. I think I'm gonna put some lines here, but I'm gonna make these wavy. So I'm gonna do something like this, just on the red part. So for me, this type of painting is my go-to when I'm feeling stressed or if there's you know, maybe a decision I need to make about something and I'm having a hard time deciding. Sitting and doing this type of painting and drawing um, it kind of hijacks my brain because I'm concentrating on what I'm doing here and it, it actually doing this it's kind of hard for me to talk and explain to you what I'm doing while I'm doing it because my brain gets really quiet this is the only time my brain is quiet the rest of the time it's like a freaking circus in my head um, but my brain gets quiet when I do this and so it's, it's a little hard for me to, to narrate for you what I'm doing because my brain just wants to be quiet um, but that's the magic of this when your brain gets quiet like that it opens the door for calm and clearer thinking. And so when I feel like I need that, this is the type of art I will sit down and make. Not necessarily in this um, format, you know, structured in squares like this, but just abstract something with doodles and random marks and random shapes and random colors, nothing that I'm, I'm thinking too hard about what the final product is gonna look like. Because it's this process of just letting my imagination run that quiets my brain. And when my brain is in that quiet state, um, my mind feels better, my body feels better, 
my heart feels better, I think more clearly. It is therapeutic in every way for my mind, body, spirit. So, um, see, my brain went quiet and I just lost my thought. <laughs> So you can do as much or as little in terms of layers and embellishing and drawing and whatever you want to do on it as you want to. There is no right or wrong answer where that's concerned. You get to decide how much you're going to do or not do. And sometimes that can be hard. Where do I stop? So again, it can be useful to set it across the room from you and take a look at it and see, is there something screaming you need to put something here? Or is it screaming, I'm done, that's enough, Wah! Um, If you can't set it across the room from you, take a picture of it, like with your phone, and look at it on your phone. You'd be surprised how much different it looks looking at it through a picture on your phone as it does to sitting with it in real life. It, it's shocking to me sometimes how, how different it can look. So you're just gonna keep going until you feel like it's done. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to call this one done so that we can take the tape off and I can show you what it looks like. Um, you know, right now, like I said, it's kind of a hot mess, but when we start peeling this tape off, each of these little vignettes is going to take on its own character. So I'm going to peel these off. When you take your tape off, it's a good practice to pull it back at as sharp an angle as you can and do it slowly, that way you have less chance of ripping your paper. If you do find that your tape really wants to rip your paper, if you hit it with a blow dryer for just a minute and heat it up, the tape will often pull off much easier with much less ripping of your paper. So I'm just gonna pull these off real quick because honestly, <laughs> Tape peeling is just a little bit of an obsession for me. I love it. It's kind of like magic because all of a sudden, what you were working on takes on an entirely new look as you rip this tape off. We're taking off all the clutter of what's in between and it completely changes the look and the character of the piece. And all of a sudden, what was done in the name of being therapeutic and giving us just some relaxing creative time, all of a sudden starts to look like an honest to goodness art piece. And how cool is that when you can do something therapeutic and end up with a cool piece of art out of it at the end. So we take all of this tape off And you'll notice as I'm ripping these edge pieces, I'm ripping it away from my painting. That way, if this tape wants to rip, I'm not pulling it this way and ripping it through the middle of my painting. It's gonna rip off the edge and I have less chance of ruining the piece that I just created. Okay, so tape off. Look at that. What do you think? All of a sudden, it's a completely different thing. Now, you could leave it like this if you wanted to, or if you wanna continue the drawing, and um, you know, kind of extend that time, you can still add elements to it after you've pulled the tape off. If, if you pull the tape off and you look at it for a day or two and you decide it, it still needs some more things to it, you can absolutely add more to it. You can either retape it or just be careful to stay within the lines or, or who says we have to stay within the lines? Maybe you want to add some more elements that kind of go outside the lines a little bit. Do that too. On this one, I took my black pen and drew borders around them just because this one screamed to me that it really wanted to be kind of um, polished in terms of how those squares looked. So I drew a line around them and I just put, if you can see, I put just a little bit of a hash mark on each corner. So that one ended up really polished looking. 
as I'm looking at this one, I'm thinking this one wants to have some things coming off the edge. So I might, I might decide that I am gonna put a little bit of a border here. So I'm just gonna draw it in with my pen, but maybe I'm gonna do something like this. on that side. So it doesn't necessarily have to stay within the confines of that little square. So again, we're allowing our creativity to run and dictate what we're gonna do here. So you can finish it off real nicely by drawing around those squares, or you can do something like this where you're doing a design element that goes off the square. It's all okay. There really is no right or wrong way to do this. And that can be sometimes frustrating for people because they wanna know step by step by step what to do. but this type of exercise is partially about learning to listen to your own creativity. So if you get an urge to do something, try it. See what it looks like. If you don't like it, it's okay. Nobody ever has to see this. You don't have to share these. You don't have to put these on social media. This is a process for you to enhance your well-being. If you want to share it because you like it, absolutely. But if you really hate it when you're done, it's a piece of paper and a little bit of paint. It has not cost you a fortune to do it, but you probably feel better in your body and your mind for having done it, even if you don't like the final result. It's what we call process over product. So don't be afraid to experiment and try things. If you don't like them, great. You've learned you don't like that. You don't do it again on the next one. If you do like it, well, maybe there's a new thing you can use in creating your art going forward. Okay? So... Um, I think for the purposes of the video, I'm probably going to end this here, but I am going to play with this a little bit more. I think I'm going to add some borders and do some little things like this outside the border so that they're, they're not quite so structured. And I will put a picture of the final one um, at the end of the video so you can see what I did, but um, I'm just going to play. I'm going to use shapes, basic shapes that I like to come outside the border and see what happens. Um, I might do you know, some additional circles or something that, that go part inside, part outside, something like that. So I will show you the final version when I'm done doodling on it. But from here, I'm really just going to doodle with basic shapes and random marks. And you can do the same thing. And you can do it with a pen, you can do it with another marker, you can do it with a pencil. Um, you know, Try it with different materials because they're all gonna look a little bit differently and see what you like, okay? So I'm gonna end you there. Hopefully this has given you some ideas on how to do this. Hopefully it has taken some of the intimidation out of doing an abstract piece of art out of it. And hopefully um, it has shown you how you can use this kind of art to, to do things like help you relieve some stress and some anxiety and calm and clear your mind, things like that. Um, this, this is why I love art. It's always fun to make pretty things, but Honestly, for me, this is the reason right here. To do a practice like this that is going to help me feel mentally, physically, emotionally better. That's the magic of it. So hope you enjoyed that. As always, if you have any questions at all, please put them in the comments of the video. Or if you follow me on social media, um, you're welcome to message me there. I'm happy to answer questions. Um, give ideas if I can, whatever I can do to help you because I really think Absolutely, everybody can benefit from a process like this. And this kind of thing doesn't require prior art skill or art knowledge. Anybody can sit and do this. Okay? So happy painting. I would love to hear how you do if you try this, both um, if you like what you created and how you felt after you're done with it. Um, so let me know if you feel like sharing it, great, um, as far as what your final project looks like. If you don't, like I said, nobody ever has to see it, but I would love to hear how you do with it. So give it a try. Let me know what you think, and I will see you on the next one. Talk to you later, my friends. Hi, my friends. Um, I am going to add a little kind of PS for you on this video because... Where I left this, I mentioned that I was going to continue to doodle and, you know, maybe add some more embellishments to this. And when I got it done, I thought it might be useful for you to see what I did and, and how and why. Um, at the end of the main part of the video, we talked about, you know, finishing these squares by outlining them or doing something like that. And I mentioned that um, one of the things you could do is not 
confine yourself to the boundaries of each of these squares. You could, you know, doodle on the outsides. And I think I used, which one did I use? This one as the example to kind of go out into that white space. And as I sat kind of doodling on this, um, some ideas took over and I wanted to show you because I thought those ideas might be useful for you. In the case of mine in particular, where I had some of these big, dark, swoopy marks, I did go ahead and put just a single border outline around each of my squares. But like where this one is, I took my black pen and followed that swoopy shape out and around and connected it in. So I drew this part in with my black pen and then I extended a couple of these lines down and there were some black splotches up here and I extended them out past the border. Um, like this one where I had that stampy shape that I made, I took my pen and continued it up above the border and just colored it in black. Same thing here. I followed those swoops out with my black pen here as well. Um, these were lines, so I just took those lines and followed them out. Some spots, like where I had these dots from the splatters, I just used my pen to make more dots out around that looked like that splatter pattern continued out. So I just mainly wanted to show you this for um, kind of the idea of creative things you can do with it and not being constrained by the boundaries of those squares once you pull the tape off. So you can use pencil, pen, marker, even paint if you wanted to, to extend your designs out into some of that white space just to give it a little more interest um, and in some cases dimension. You can say I did the same thing here. I just used my pen to follow those those lines around. When I pulled the tape off, it all ended right there. So I just took my pen and followed it around. And I think it ended up, um, I think it ended up pretty cool. It ended up being much more interesting by extending those lines past the boundaries of the square. So where, where this first one, everything was kind of constrained inside the squares, it looks much more, um, what's the word I want? I don't have the word. <laughs> uh... Rigid's not the word I want. I don't know. Hopefully you're with me. You understand. It looks much um, uh, much more exact because everything stayed inside those squares. And that's a cool look by itself. There's nothing wrong with that. But I wanted to show you just for the, the purpose of being creative and kind of following creative ideas that you might have, you don't have to stay within the boundaries of those squares. You can go out into those margins and do some fun things as well. So um, after I got this done, I thought this would be good to add onto the video just to show you some additional ideas. So now I'm going to end it here. <laughs> Happy painting, everybody.